Hi everyone and welcome to this half hour tutorial showing you how I created that blurry out of focus crowd of people in the background. Working in soft pastel I'll show you how I build them up without including too much detail. If you like the video please do subscribe here on YouTube. I have lots of free content here and also consider checking me out over on Patreon where you'll find my full catalogue of these longer tutorials. But hopefully in this half hour tutorial I can show you the basics of how I create this crowd. So I'm using a mixture of soft pastel sticks, mostly the brand Unison, but I'm also making use of some pan pastels. Here I'm using one of the pan pastel applicators or blenders. This is a lovely item, it's just a handle with some uh, changeable sponge ends on it and I particularly like the triangular shaped one. It's great for getting detail but with a really soft edge. And I'm working on pastel matte paper which I often find is quite a hard paper to get soft edges on. So these applicators are great for keeping edges soft and nice and blurred. So I will use pastel pencil in this painting later on. You saw that there's a lot of detail in the car and that's really where I save the pastel pencil for. I want to try and avoid using any pencil if I want to create a nice out of focus effect on the people. You can see in the photo reference, I've zoomed in on just the little crowd of people there. And if you look really closely, you'll see that some of the people have three heads because there's a lot of motion blur. The only thing that was really in focus in the photograph uh, was the car itself. So it's quite a tricky crowd of people because I know I won't be getting the likeness of anyone. I can't really pick out any detail in them which is helpful because I'm really just going to look for the shapes. Here I'm trying to pick out the negative shapes behind the people. Using those areas of background just behind to separate them into a few little clumps of people. And start to shape some of the legs especially. So I'm just loading up my applicator either using a little bit of pan pastel or quite often if I don't have the right colour in pans because I don't have as many of those I'll take my stick from Unison and I'll use the applicator to rub some pigment directly off the pastel stick. So quite often with this piece I'm using this lovely deep navy colour and now I'm just deciding on some of the areas that I want to strengthen. I'm more sure of those. So always working from dark to light. Trying to pick out the contrast in behind. And also using the greenery of the bushes just behind the crowd to help me shape the figures. But you can see the difference between adding the pigment onto pastel matte paper using the applicator or using the stick directly onto the paper. You get a much softer mark when you use the applicator. And for this section of the process where I'm really just uh, sketching in and blocking in some areas of colour. So I don't need it to be at its full pigment colour right away. I'm just blocking in some of the blue jeans that we see along the row of people. Thankfully it was the mid-1980s so almost everyone was wearing jeans. So the figures just to the left of the group 
are the ones that we're going to focus on for the majority of this tutorial. The process is repeated right across the line. So if I can show you how in detail I build up the first little clump of people, then hopefully you can apply it to your own paintings. So what I'm mainly looking for are the blocks and the shapes of color that I can see. Just using my spongy applicator to find the waistline of the man's top and to shape the shoulder and the arm as it comes down towards the waistline. So I want this first guy in the crowd to really stand out from the background. I'm just adding a bit more contrast, softening away some of my highlight colours in the greenery behind so that the light colours on this guy really stand out. And clothing from a distance tends to look quite blocky. You can see general shapes and colours. I'm really hoping to not go into much detail on each figure. It would be pretty difficult as I can't really see much detail in the photo reference. And for me that simplifies things because I can literally just look at the main shapes and as soon as you get those blocked in using the correct values you will already start to get a 3D feel to your figures. So it's more important to choose your colour values, how bright you want to go with your highlights and really considering your shadow colors. So picking up a shadow color here that I'll use for some of the clothing that's lighter in color, but that's in the shadows. So really simplifying what I can see. And I really wasn't sure if this first little group of people is an adult and a young adult and possibly a child in front of them, possibly two children. It's really hard to tell from the photo reference. So I, I decided to uh, try and make it look like another person in front of there, but not worry about any detail in it. So if it doesn't quite look like another person, I'm not too worried as I want this whole area to remain out of focus. And for the first part of the tutorial, I'll just worry about the bodies and get all of those blocked in. Then I'll come back and place all the heads on. This wasn't something I intended to do, but it made sense when I started that I would come back and add all of the heads and a little bit of detail to those close to the end. So even when not adding much detail, you can suggest quite a lot about a person's posture or their stance from just a few marks. Again, the applicator is a lovely soft way to add some pigment to the paper. It really feels like you're painting when you're using that. It's like having a brush. And most of the time I really love the strength of the colour. You can see how strongly that colour goes on from the soft stick. And sometimes I need that, but it's great to have the option to very softly paint something in. 
Of course, normally in my work I use pastel pencil as well. But there is not a lot of pencil use, if at all, in this group of people. Anytime you want something to remain out of focus, try and keep your tools as big as possible. Keep your marks as big as possible. So just blocking in some little areas of white shirts. I loved that most of the crowd were wearing white on top. As they really stand out, it's catching the light really nicely. And because it's quite a dark painting with all of the green surrounding the darkness of the bushes, I like that the car and the crowd of people really jump out. So lots of unison colours being used here in the additional range. Lovely light greys with a hint of lilac. Lots of colours that I couldn't do without for many different subject matters. Anytime you're painting something white, it's so useful to have some of those off-white shades. You can see just how dull those colours are next to the bright white shirts that I've added in. So it's important to have a good range of light colours for any subject matter. So just catching a little bit of light on the first man's other leg. And as soon as I do that, it sort of brings a little figure to life. So even when I do use the soft sticks to apply the pigment, the sponge applicator can become very useful just to tidy up around the edges, to soften the edges or change the shape of what I've applied. So definitely a great tool, especially I'm finding on the pastel matte paper. And of course what's really going to help the crowd stand out are some of those negative spaces in between them. So here I'm just darkening down some of the gaps between their legs. And that's going to help the nice bright blue of their jeans stand out. But you can see how boxy all of the shapes are that I'm making. None of them really look like uh, realistic limbs. Everything's just blocks of colour. And it's always surprising to me how little detail you need to trick the eye into thinking that it's real. So this is how I work my way across the crowd, just like that first little group. Blocking in any prominent shapes that really stand out. And that might be the shape of a highlight area. It might be the shape of a blue area on the jeans. Just whichever shapes really stand out to me that seem really prominent. So I would say it's probably from the biggest shapes down to the smallest shapes. And adding little bits of shadow colour. Always remembering that the light is coming from the left. So each right side of a figure will have more shadow colours.
And of course, all of the time, softening the pigment into the paper a little, both with the applicator, sometimes with my fingertip. I think it's a good trick to blur your eyes a little bit when you're looking at this while you're painting something like this. To me, although they're not perfect, it looks like the first guy is standing with his arms crossed and maybe a, a teenage son who's slouching beside him and a younger sibling just in front of them. So even without heads, without any detail, you can still see a lot about people about their posture from just a few marks. So again, those lovely white shirts adding really definite shapes across the crowd. Nice and easy for me to pick out definite shapes to block in first. And great that there was someone wearing a nice bright red shirt hidden in there. Not too prominent, just a nice little bit of vibrance shining out from amongst the green. I think a lot of red back there would have been a little bit distracting from the car. And there is still that uh, ticker tape to add across the spectators, which I do at the very end of the painting. And that has a nice little bit of red and white on it, just carrying the colors of the car further around the painting. So I really didn't change much about this crowd other than the fact that I didn't try to add three heads on some of them. I kept the colours pretty similar to how they are in the photo reference. I thought it was a nice mix and that it stood out really well. And just using my softer unison sticks to strengthen some of the blue in the jeans. So I've worked on across the crowd, just blocking in t-shirts and jeans mostly. And at this point, I've got to start adding all of the heads. And I'm using this lovely RE9, Red Earth 9 by Unison. And I'm really just going to add a little blob of this color onto each set of shoulders and then shape it roughly into place. So a little bit of experimentation with the first one just to see how that's going to go on. And just picking out a little bit of hair on the kid over to the left. I did have their heads sketched in initially so I can still see the outline of that faintly just below my other pastel layers. So I have a rough guide of how big to go with the heads. But it's quite a forgiving medium, you can make something bigger or smaller. You can see how easy it is to add a little bit more or to take it away with the applicator or with a little bit of your background colour. 
a lot of the time I'm not putting things on perfectly with just the stick. I do rely on coming in and moving things around a little. And sometimes when it's a high level of detail that I'm after, that will be done using pastel pencils. But in this case, the applicator really is the perfect job for keeping everything soft and out of focus. So the first three heads on don't look too bad. Of course, they're quite dark in color at the moment. I will add some highlights to the heads. But the first task really is to get them all blocked in. What seems to happen between the first guy's arm and the smaller child's head is that the flesh colours seem to melt together in that part of the photo reference. So that's exactly what I've done. I've just given a little hint of some of that warm colour. It could either be the guy's arm where he's crossing it or it could be some flesh colour coming from the little figure at the bottom in between. So the more I start to feel the crowd looking a little bit 3D when I step back from the painting, squint my eyes a little bit, the less detail I add in things, the more confident I get in adding less. Sometimes less really is more in this kind of effect. And even just with some smudges of that flesh colour dotted across their heads, it begins to take shape. So even when adding some highlight colours to the heads, I'm not worried about picking up a bigger stick. You can still often find a small edge on the end of the stick, especially when they're fresh. And I'm really just dotting a bit of pigment on there and then hoping that I can take my sponge applicator and shape it into place a little. You'll notice that I've got one sponge applicator that I keep for my lighter colours and one that I keep for doing dark work like in the dark greens and the browns in the background, the dark blues of the jeans. So I keep one of those applicators fresh for when I want to blend or apply a lighter colour. So this isn't pure white, you can see that it's not as bright as some of the shirts. Either grey 27 or grey 25. Something that has a yellow tint to it and makes a good off-white. And it is a really bright day so there is a good bit of light hitting the tops of some of the heads and just allowing a little bit of the red earth colour that I applied to shine through. And hopefully that will be enough for each figure in the group. Collectively they should look real. As part of the background they should look real. So the key is to not overwork this. I quite like the effect that I got early on with the guy on the left and that helped me to try and work each of the other figures to a similar level of detail. So people often ask me why I call my pastel work paintings and you can probably see why 
in this process especially, just how similar it is to the painting process. To me, it's not so important the wetness of the medium. To me, my process feels more like painting. I have a lot more in common with oil painting than I do with a charcoal drawing, even though it's in the same kind of dry medium. So it's not that important, but that's why I call my work paintings. So just trying to dot on a little bit of highlight colour on each of the heads, spending a little minute on each one, just shaping it into place, looking mostly for the main highlight on the top of the skull, and if there's any kind of brighter highlight further down the face, perhaps catching a, a nose or a cheekbone, that's as much as I can really hope to get on this scale. You can see how tiny each of the figures are. So even if I did have more detail to go by, it would be very tricky to add more. And of course I have chopped this down a little bit for the tutorial just to make it a nicer length to watch. I think all in all the crowd took me about one hour to complete. So just shaping each of the heads. The figures in this particular section are going to be a little more obscured than the others because of the cloud of dust in front of them. So I'm even a little less worried about how realistic they look up close. And I really hope that you've enjoyed watching this, just nearing the end of the tutorial now. I hope that it has given you some ideas how you can incorporate some tiny figures into your paintings, whether it's a landscape or a cityscape. You really don't have to go into a huge amount of detail to add a large number of people to your painting. But thanks for watching this, and until next time, happy pastling.